All right, so good morning and welcome to our Fractions Workshop, right? So Space and Works Private Tutoring. So let's get started. <clears throat> All right, so this is the Advanced Workshop. So you all would be going into Standard 4, in Standard 4 or in Standard 5. Right, so I am Miss Darcel. Right, so it's good to have you. I will be your tutor for today. And right, so our course details. So we're going to cover, but well, we'll try to do three. Right, depending on the time, but definitely we're going to get through the first two. Right, each um, objective will be 35 minutes. There'll be two breaks in between and a short little baby quiz at the end. All right, just to make sure that you'll understand what we did. All right, our objectives for today. So today we're gonna learn how to add, and, add subtract, multiply, and divide fractions with unlike denominators. So they're not the same. We're going to learn to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions with whole numbers. Then we're going to learn to change percentages and decimals into fractions. So those are our three objectives for today. All right, so our course requirements. So before you should have knowledge of the four operations to solve proper fractions. So add, multiply, subtract, divide. Everybody should know how to do those four, right? You should know the different types of fractions. So improper, proper, mixed number, mm -hmm. you should know those. Um, you should be able to change into equivalent fractions. All right, everybody should know how to do that. And you should know all your tables. Yes, 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 tables are important. And also how to reduce and simplify. So let me ask, anybody is not sure any of these four things? Anybody does not know what to do? If you're okay and you know all of these things, give me a thumbs up. If no, give me a what emoji? Give me a heart emoji, <laughs> if you're not sure. Oh, Tariq. All right, Tariq. So type for me what you don't know how to, which one to do. Type it in for me, which one you don't know how to do. The last one. So we do some simplify. All right, no problem. We will go, we'll go into that. That's pretty. Once I get it, it's pretty easy to get. All right, good job. Okay. Next. All right, so you're going to see some singles. So sometimes I might have D for drum roll, C for confetti, zero for bubbles. Q for quiet and a timer. So you might just see some random figures coming up, um, icons coming up on your screen. Don't be afraid. These are just some of the symbols that I've put up, right? All right. So for example, boom, let's begin. All right. So that's one of the there's some pop-ups there. All right, so let's get started. So we're looking at our first objective to add, subtract, divide, and multiply, All right? We have different types of fractions. So we need to know how to do it when we get a proper fraction, when we get an improper fraction, when we have a mixed number. All right, so let's head into the first. All right, so let's head into the first example. So you're gonna take down this note here. <laughs> Addition, change to equivalent fraction, or use the butterfly method. So we're going to look at some examples here. Well, one example. So we have three eighths. 
plus one half. All right, so we have equivalent. We can either change it, change the two of them using equivalent fraction, or we can use the butterfly method. Um, which method would you all like to use or which method you're all more comfortable with? Put it in the chat so I can see. Put E for equivalent, put B for butterfly. All right, B. Okay, so Tariq knows the butterfly method, right? And Elijah knows the equivalent fraction method. So let's do the two of them together. And let's see if we get the same answer. All right, so you all do it first. Put the answer in the chat. And then I will do two, the two methods on the screen. All right, I want to, you all will look it out in your textbooks, notebooks. Make sure you can take the rule if you want to. Take down the rule. And try the example. All right, and, I'm, and then I'm going to do it both ways. All right, so E for equivalent, we'll go on this side. And then B for butterfly, we'll go on this side. So we're going to show the two methods of addition. I see, I see, I got, I saw the answer. So let's solve them using the two methods. So let's look at the equivalent method now. So we have to change both of them. Well, not necessarily. With the equivalent method, that means we're looking at the denominators. All right, and they need, we're going to change them so they have the same denominator. All right, so two can go into eight. So we can leave eight by itself, right? Two is a multiple of eight. So we have that remains the same. All right, we could change, we need to change a half. Right, so now with equivalent fractions, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So to go from two to eight, we have to multiply by what number? Type it in each other there for me, what number? Both of you all type it in each other to go to two to eight. Two multiplied by eight will get, two multiplied by what will give us eight? No. Yes, two multiplied by four will give us eight. So that means we have to do what's at the bottom as well, at the top. So one multiplied by four is eight, All right? So now it's way easier for us to add them together because they have the same denominator now, All right? So three eighths plus four eighths is going to give us seven eighths, right? So take that down. Yes, we can know you're looking shocked, right? Pretty simple. Okay, let's do the butterfly method. 
So the butterfly method is a little longer, but it still gets the job done. So you have three eighths plus one half, right? You circle the opposite. You circle the opposite. Right, so we already have three multiplied by two will give us six. All right, just circle the wings here. One multiplied by eight will give us eight. And of course we need the denominator. Eight multiplied by two will give us 16. Right, so eight plus, sorry, six plus eight over 16. Six plus eight will give us 14 over 16, but we're not done. So Tariq, this is where reducing comes in. Reduce and simplify. So we're going to look for what multiple or what number can we divide both 14 and 6? We're thinking of multiples now. You, can you think of a number that could go into 14 and 6 without a remainder, three? Put an answer in each other. Right, both of you. What number can 14 be divided by and 16 be divided by? Yes, the number two. So when you reduce in, you're looking for one number that could divide both of them. All right, two is the smallest, or you could start with two and then you can work your way up. All right, it could be four, it could be eight. You have to figure out which number it is. All right, so 14 divided by two will give us seven. 16 divided by two will give us eight. And there we have it the same answer, right? So they have two different ways to do the same thing. All right, so I'm gonna give you all three minutes, right, to take it down. Three minutes. Yes, you're taking on both of them. All right, so time is up. So let's go to the other. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the next one. Let's go to subtraction. All right, we use the same rules as addition. You can use the butterfly method or you can use the equivalent method, right? So let's try it again. Now we're gonna do subtraction, all right, we have a I'll give you a little sum here. Seven eighths minus one half, right? You can use, you can look back on your addition rules. All right, you can look back at the example and I want you to try this one for me. All right, if you have any question, send on your mic or simply message me in the chat. All right, if you have any question.
All right, so I want you to try this one, three minutes on the clock. So you're gonna try this one for me. All right, we're gonna do the same two methods. So whichever method is easier for you, do that method, that's perfectly fine. Right. Right. So one side is the butterfly, one side we will do the equivalent. So it's the same rules as this addition, but you simply just Subtracting instead of adding now, right? Make sure you remember that, that you're going to be subtracting and not adding. So you don't want to make that mistake and mix them up. All right, so we have seven eighths and one half. Now let's look at the, the, at the denominators. We have eight and we have two. Now, if we were look to look at what number do they have in common? Let's look at the multiples of two and the multiples of eight. All right, the multiples of two have two, right? Whereas the multiples of eight would be two, Four, eight, right? Actually, multiples of two keep going, huh? Two, four, eight, right? If we look at the tables. So, let's look here. Two can definitely go into eight, right? Right, they both have eight in common. Right, they both have eight in common. So eight is gonna be the common factor between the two. So we're gonna keep eight as our denominator. So eight is gonna remain as our denominator. So that means we only have to change one half into an equivalent fraction where the denominator is going to be eight. All right, so let's look at that. So let's change one half into a fraction where the denominator is eight. All right, to reek, to go from two to eight, what would we have to multiply the number two by? The answer in the chat. Just put the number. Correct, the number four. All right, so two multiplied by four will give us eight. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So you also multiply by four here. So that will give you four eighths. So one half has now turned into four eights. All right, seven eights remain the same because we use an eight as a denominator. So our next line would be seven eights minus four eights, right? We have now, re we can rewrite the equation, All right? They have the same denominator now. So that remains the same, All right? Seven minus four will give us three eighths. Three eighths. All right, so write that down in the meantime. Okay, let's look at the 
butterfly method, right? We'll take a few minutes. Butterfly method. Um, Elijah, did you reduce? You reduced what you had? We must reduce it. Reduce your answer, yes. It's too big. It could actually be smaller. All right. Oh, look, um, Makaya is here. All right, so let's do the equivalent method now. Okay. Yeah, you do something wrong. Let's do the equivalent method now. So we have seven eighths, so we're looking at the screen. Seven eighths minus one half. No, sorry, the butterfly method. So with the butterfly method, right? We have to basically draw a butterfly. So first we draw the wings with the antennas. All right, then we draw the body. Now, under each antenna and under the body, we have to put the numbers there. So, under the first antenna, we have 7 multiplied by 2, 7 and 2, and that will give us 14. 14 comes under this antenna here. Under the second antenna, we have 8 multiplied by 1. And that is going to give us 8. Under the body, we're going to do 8 multiplied by 2. And that's going to give us 16. All right, so if you had a question. No, not yet. All right. Right, so the numbers at the top are the numerators and the numbers at the bottom are the denominators. Yes, Tariq, tell me your question. Ask me a question. And you might have to type it out. Right, so while Tariq is typing, okay. All right, okay, I'll go through it again, don't worry. Right? So, with the butterfly method, one more time, we circle the denominator, the numerator on the left and the denominator on the right. All right? So you're making a wing there, and then you make a little antenna. Those numbers, the numerator and the opposite denominator, you have to multiply them together and you will get the product, which is 14. Then you're going to multiply the denominator on the left and the numerator on the right. You will get 8 multiplied by 1 and that will give us 8. Then the third step, right, we're going to find the denominators. So we have 8 multiplied by 2 will give us 16. So when we write this out, this is what it's going to look like. 14 minus... 8 all over 
16. Right? 14 minus 8 is going to give us 6 over 16. But we are not done. We have to reduce this fraction. It's way too big. All right? Anybody put any chart for me? What multiple can we reduce both 6 and 16 by? What number can we use? Answers in the chat. Answers in the chat. What's one number that could go into 6 and could go into 16? What number would that be? With no remainders. Mm -hmm. Makaya. Can you give me a number? Makaya, type in your number. All right, I have a few people. All right. So that number is the number two. All right, that's the number two. So six divided by three, two will give us three. 16 divided by two will give us eight which is the same as this one here. So we got the same answer. All right. So I'm going to give you all time to write down the sums, write down the examples. All right, I'm giving you all three minutes to write it down. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, so for the equivalent fraction way, right, you have to find a common multiple that both of them could go into, and that multiple. And that multiple is 8. All right, 7, 8 already has a denominator that is the number 8. So we don't have to change 7, 8. All right, we only have to change 1 half. We change 1 half into an equivalent fraction. 2 changes to 8 when you multiply by 4. 1, you multiply by 4, you will get 4. Seven eighths minus 3 minus 4 eighths now will give us 3 eighths. Right? So you have two different ways to do it. Some people prefer the butterfly, some people prefer the... Um, Equivalent fraction method. Right? The butterfly is a little more complicated, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty straightforward. So you're circling the opposite numbers. You multiply them together. So 7 and 2, they're opposite. 7 and 2 are 14. 8 multiplied by 1. If I want to opposite, it will give us 8. And then you multiply the denominators together and you will get 16. From there, you simply subtract the numerators. 14 minus 8 will give us 6. Our denominator remains as 16. 
right? And of course, you always double check to see if your fractions can be reduced. Right, so six, 16, you're looking for a common multiple. That multiple is two. Six divided by two will give us three. 16 divided by two will give us eight. And we will also get three eight. Right. So now we're going on to multiplying. We're going to do a review at the end. So if you missed anything, don't worry. We're going to go through it again. To the next slide. So the next skill we're going to do, multiplication. Now you're definitely going to need to take down the rules, right? So in order to, there are two ways to do multiplication, right? Some people might find the pink way easier. Some people might find the gold way easier. Whichever is kind of easier for you. You master that way and you can do it. All right, so we're gonna use the exact same example. So the sum is three eighths multiplied by two ninths. And on this side, we're putting it here as well. All right, so let's look at the left side of the screen. That's the pink, pink um, writing. So I'm going to read through the rules. Step one, we multiply the numerators together. Step two, multiply the denominators together. Step three, reduce or simplify, right? So I think we can do these together, right? I want you all to try it first. All right, using the steps, put your answer in the chat. All right, you have one minute, put the answer in the chat and let's see, and then I'm going to do it on the screen and let's see if we get it. So try it, try it out for me. All right, you'll put the answer in the chat. So you're following the steps. You multiply the numerators together. Then you multiply the denominators together. And then you reduce and simplify. So reduce or simplify means you're going to look for a common multiple. Right? Two is always the easiest. Two and three, you can always start with those. All right? And we keep reducing until they can be reduced no more. All right, let's get those answers in the chat. Answers in the chat. All right, so time is up. Okay, I didn't see anybody put an answer in the chat. So we're just gonna look at the screen. So we have three eights. So our first step, we have to multiply the numerators. So three multiplied by two is going to give us six. Eight 
8 multiplied by 9 it's a very big number so this is why okay good good is 72 now we have to reduce we have to reduce so we have to think of a number so that number is 6 And you could do two, but then it's going to take you a little longer to get there. So this is why tables are very important. If you know your six times table, then you know that six can go divide six. So six into six, one. 70, six will go into 72, 12 times. 12 sixes are 72. All right, table is very, very, very important. Okay, let's look at the next side of the screen now. All right, cancel by cross division. Then you multiply numerators together. Then you multiply the denominators together. All right, so cross division. What does that mean? Or canceling out by using cross division. All right, you're looking at opposite. Opposite. Or sometimes even right here on top of each other. All right, so let's look at the opposite numbers. All right, two and eight. So let's see if we can reduce. Let's find a number that could go into two and could go into eight. The easiest number is two. Two can go into two. All right, and that will give us one. Eight divided by two. So you reduce it just as normal. All right, and that will give us four. So our new denominator up here is one. The new, the new denominator up here is four. Right, now we head to the next one. Let's go over here. So our next cross cancellation. All right, we have three and we have nine. What number can go into three and nine? That number is the number three. So three divided three will give us one. And nine divided three will give us three. All right, we have just canceled it out. All right, let's head over to step number two. Multiply the numerators together. Put this in red. So one by one. Then we multiply the denominators together. We have four and we have three. All right, so one by one will give us one, and four by three will give us 12. Well, good. All right, so we end up with the same answer, but two different ways of doing it. All right, so I'm gonna give you all time, five minutes. You're all going to write this down for me. All right, write down everything, write down the steps, Right on the example. And five minutes. If you have any questions? Let me know. All right, Tarika, you okay? Again, Sue.
What about Makaya? Getting through? Oops, what just happened? All right, good. Okay, so let's clear and let's go on to the next part. So all this is just proper fractions. Huh? We haven't even gone to improper yet. Fractions is a big subject. All right, let's go now to division of fraction, proper fractions. So three simple rules, very simple. We change the sign into a multiplication. Then we flip the second fraction and we apply the same multiplication rules that we just did. All right, so let's look at this example here. So we have three eighths divide one half. All right, so let's follow the steps. First step, change the sign into a multiplication sign. So step one. So now our fraction looks like this, 3 eighths multiply by 1 half. Then we have to do the second step. Flip over the second fraction. So now it looks like 3 eighths multiply by 2 over 1. And then we reduce and simplify as normal. So I want everybody to try it. Right? I'm putting three minutes on the clock. Put your answer in the chat for me. So tell me what our third step is going to be. What our final answer is going to be. Oh, I see someone already has. Yes, you can use any method you want. Any method. Any method will get you the correct answer. So whichever method is more convenient, you go right ahead. All right, so two minutes on the clock. You just need to figure out the start to cancel or whichever modification method you want to use. And that's it. Very straightforward. Mm-hmm, any answers, any answers? 30 seconds, 30 seconds remaining. All right, I see one person has an answer in. Let's see who else. All right, can that be reduced? 
Oh, ask yourself, can that be reduced? Can I reduce it? Can you reduce it? All right, time is up. Let's check. All right, so we're looking at the screen. So we have three eights. Mm -hmm. Answers coming in. Give me one after this, right? Just let me solve this and yeah, just now. All right. So. Uh-huh. Let me solve this quickly. And we're going to go on a break. Right, we can do this way. So the cross cancellation. 2 into 2 will give us 1. Two, A divided 2 will give us 4. Let me multiply across. All right, and that would have given us 3 quarters. Or if it did the other way, 6 over 8 would also be reduced, divided by 2. And you would also get 3 quarters. All right. Okay, so we've come to our first break. We're going to take a five-minute break. All right? When we come back, we are going to look at improper fractions. All right, we'll come to, remember, you're supposed to multiply. I think you added. All right, so we'll take a pause. And we'll be back in five minutes. I'm going to put a timer on the screen so you can take it down for those who didn't. All right, if you need to use the bathroom. All right, if you don't need to use the bathroom and you want to chat and figure out what, what we went, what, where we went wrong, All right, so we're going to take a break. We'll be right back in five minutes. All right, so we, now we're going to look at applying our same, well, applying the same skills, how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide improper fraction. So the first section was proper fractions. Now we're going to look at improper fractions. We know that improper fractions are fractions where the denominator is larger than the, sorry, where the numerator is larger than the denominator. All right? So the bigger number is on top instead of at the bottom. All right, so let's look at an example here. We're looking at an addition example. All right, so you're looking at the screen. All right, so our example is we're going to add eight fifths plus five fourths. All right, as you can see, they're both improper fractions. The numerator is larger than the denominator, right? So let's use the equivalent method. <clears throat> and we're gonna use the equivalent method. All right, those who like the butterfly, you can go right ahead and use the butterfly. All right, but we're going to use the equivalent method. So we're looking for a number that, or a multiple of four and five. All right, so four would be four, eight, 12, 16, 20. 5, we can find multiple, 5, 10, 15, and 20. As you can see, the common multiple, 20. So that is what we're going to use as our denominator. 
All right, that's what we're going to use as our denominator. So we have to change. All right, this was the first step. So now we have to change 8 fifths. It's an equivalent fraction that has a denominator of 20. And we also have to change 5 fifths. All right, so in the chart, what is going to come at the top here? What's coming at the top here? Eight fifths. In the chart, put the number that's coming at the top. Eight fifths. Okay. In the chart. Guys, what number? What number coming at the top? What's going to be the new numerator? What's going to be the new numerator? All right, let's take a step back. To go from 5 to 20, we have to multiply 5 by what? 5 by what will give us 20? 4. Put that answer in the chat. Right, 4. All right, so 8 multiplied by 4 is? 32. 32. Good. Table is very important. Did I put four here? Sorry, this is supposed to be five. All right, four multiplied by five will give us 20. So we have to do that at the top. So five fives are 25. So now we have changed both of them into equivalent fractions. So now we can add them. So it Fifths is now 32 over 20 plus, as we add, we are adding, 5 fifth fourths is now 25 over 20. All right, and we can add these two together. All right, they both have the same denominator. 32 plus 25. Let me see. 32 plus 25. Answer in the chat. 32 plus 25. What's that going to give us? 32 plus 25. Anybody put the answer in the chat or say it out loud. 32 plus 25. Five plus two is seven. Three plus two is five. Fifty-seven. All right. Now we're not going to leave it as an improper fraction. We have to change it into a mixed number. All right. So we're going to change it into a mixed number. Right, and the easiest way to do that is long division. All right, so 20 can go, so we know it's not 3, because then it will be 60. All right, so we know it can go into 57 two times. Right? 2 multiplied by 20 will give us 40. Then our next step subtraction. 7 minus 0 is 7. 5 minus 4 is 1. Sorry, Mina. Oops, what does this say? 
Mm, something just popped up. What's that? What's that? Get it away. No. What is this? That's weird. All right, so the answer is two and 17 out of 20. Why is this coming up? I didn't press this. Close. How do I get this away? Right, okay. All right, that's weird. So now our final, final answer is going to be two holes, 17 is our numerator and our denominator remains as 20. All right, so this is adding. All right, so I'm gonna give you all three minutes, take this down. All right, write as quickly as you can. All right, so you're taking down this, right? We're doing improper. We add in improper fractions. So we have eight fifths plus five fourths. We're gonna use the equivalent method because that's, that's the easiest one. All right. So we found a common multiple and that is 20. So we're gonna change each, so we're writing in the meantime, we're gonna change each of these denominators, right, into an equivalent fraction where 20 is a new denominator. So eight fifths, that's the second step. So eight fifths is now going to be 32 over 20, right? Because you have to multiply by four. We multiply the left side by four and we came up with 32 over 20. Five fourths is now 25 over 20. Right, we both multiply five fourths by five. Then our third step, we have to multi um, add. So we're adding 32 over 20 plus 25 over 20. <clears throat> and that's gonna give us 57 over 20. Now we don't leave it as an improper fraction. We have to change it into a mixed number. The easiest way is law and division. Right, so two can go into 50, 20 can go into 57 two times. And that will give us 40 and the remainder would be 17. So our two is our whole number. The remainder, which was 17 is now our numerator. And of course, 20 remains as our denominator. All right, I'll give you all a few more minutes. Oh boy. All right, just a few more minutes, probably like two more minutes and we have to move on to the... So this is addition. We're gonna do subtraction. Okay, you have two more minutes. So 
So let's look so we know how to add. All right, let's look at how we would subtract. All right, so luckily for us, it's the same steps. So we only have to do some minor adjustments. All right, we can change this sign. So we change in the sign. All right. We don't have to do as many steps. So that's the good thing about subtraction. It's very similar to addition. Right? So just put your subtraction sign. So 32 minus 25 will simply give us, who can tell me? What's 32 minus 25? I'm waiting for that answer. Let me hear. Let's say two minus twenty-five. In the chat. In the chat. Answers in the chat. Thirty-two minus twenty-five. All right, you can count how much to go from twenty-five to thirty-two. Seven. All right, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. 26, 27, 28, seven so your final answer see how easy it is once you have the first three steps first two steps which is in it their equivalent easy sailing from there right so all you have to do for under subtraction All right, just writing over, we're using the same sum. We're writing the sum. You can skip over to step number three and that's it because we would have already done the changing it in the equivalent fraction. Right? If you were to do it using the butterfly method, some people prefer that method, even though a little more complicated. You can use the butterfly method. All right. So this would be 25 here. This would be 32 here. All right. This would be 20. So you're getting the exact same thing. 32 minus 25 over 20, you'll still get back 720. All right, so whichever way you want is, and it's more convenient for you, go for it. All right, now we have to move on to multiplying them now. Multiplying. So you're using the exact same rules like multiplying proper fractions. Okay, you're using the exact same rules like when you're multiplying the proper fractions. So we only have to do minor erasing. All right, minor erasing. All right, major erasing. All right, so here we go quickly. We have, we're gonna multiply. Now, if you remember our rules, whichever way you want to do it, right? So let me see, y'all try this one. Put the answer in the chat, make sure to reduce. All right, put the answer in the chat. I'm giving you three minutes to complete this one. How would you multiply an improper fraction? Remember, using the same rules. Using the same rules as Typical 
multiplication. All right, I want to see the answers in the chat when you are finished. Any method, any method. Right, you have to reduce, you have to reduce. Yes, you're on the right path, but you have to reduce. And you need to get it as small of a number as possible. All right, you can start with two or any number that's bigger, right? You don't have to start with two, you can start with five, you can start with 10, you can start with six, you can start with any number, any large number. But once it's a multiple of it, right? This is why your multiplication is very important. So you have the first step correct. Now you simply have to reduce it. Right, answers in the chat, answers in the chat, answers in the chat. Can that be reduced? Yes, it can. What can both of them be divided by? There must be a, a, a multiple that both could go into both of them. Right, start with that and keep reducing until we go, they can't be reduced anymore. Right, other gentlemen, I'm waiting for your responses. All right, let me get um, Elijah's response and let me get Makaya's response in the chat, please. All right, keep reducing until it can be reduced no more. All right, you're still going. All right. What about Elijah? Have you come to the end? All right, you can do cancel using the cross cancellation. Or you can multiply across and then reduce from there. Whichever one is more convenient. All right. So because we are a little we're running out of time, let's I'm gonna do the two methods on the so you all keep working. I'm gonna do the two methods on the screen. So first method we're gonna multiply across. So we have Eight multiplied by five over five multiplied by four. And that's gonna give us forty right. So now we need to figure out we have to reduce, we can't leave this either. So you can either reduce it using long division or dividing. So you're looking for a number. Let's start with 10, as they both end in zero. All right. So we end up with four over two. 
And look at that. 2, you divide both of them by 2. And you will get 2. Right? Now let's go on to the other method. Let's say we did cross cancellation. Hmm, let's cross it this way. Aha. Uh -huh. Are they multiples of each other? They're actually the same. So 5 divided 5 will give us 1. 5 divided 5 will give us 1. Now let's cross. Uh, let's check these cross numbers here. 4 and 8. We can use 4 to reduce the 2 of them. 4 divided by 4 will give us 1. 8 divided by 4 will give us 2. So therefore we have... Two multiplied by one over one multiplied by one, which is simply two over one, which is two. Anybody got two? Did anybody get two? Thumbs up. Anybody got two? Oh, you're still going. All right. All right. So your answer would have been All right, let's head over. Really? What you're not understanding? How to reduce it? Well, talk, tell me, what you don't understand? You got up to 40 over 20, right? And you were doing, you were using two, right? So if you had got to there, let's, I'm coming over here. So 40. Or 20, reduce it by 2. Alright, or if you were keen, you would have seen that 20 could go into 40 two times. But... Alright, so let's say you try the longer way. By 2. Then you would have 20 over 10. Divide by 2 again. Then you would get 10 over 5. And then you would get two. So where did you stop, Tariq? Where did you stop at? Thirty-two. How did you get thirty-two? Did you divide forty by two? And 20 by 2. No. Um, what about Micaiah and Elijah? Where did yours stop? There's no nobody got two, so I want to know where did yours stop, Tammy?
40 over 20. All right. So just reducing, we have to go through. And Elijah, what about you? Elijah, what about you? Where did you stop? All right. So when you get, let's go through here. When you get 40 over 20, you have to think about ways to reduce. There are many different ways to reduce, right? The easiest way you could start with two, right? If you're not sure. Or you could have even canceled out the zeros and just said four, if two into four is two. You could have done that as well, right? You could have done it using 10, divide both to the top and the bottom by 10. So whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. All right, and then reduce your way down. Or you could have even used 20, right? So this is why your tables are, well, you don't know 20 times tables, right? But tables are important. 10 times tables, you would have realized that they both end in zero. So 10 times would be easy. Right, or two, you could use two, right, or five, you could have even used five, right? I mean, the 40 is eight, you get back um, eight fifths. No, you'll get eight over four, right? Four could go into eight two times. Yeah, right. All right. Now let's look at dividing. I'm using the same sum, we're just going to divide. All right, and I, I'm going to have to do a little change in what I wanted to do. I want us to do, we will go straight into the quiz. All right, because I don't want us to keep going on and on. Well, we only have 15 minutes left, and I don't want us to keep going on. And we haven't conquered the first um, objectives, right? All right. So let's try. I can clear this screen. All right, we're going to do a division now. I use any same steps as we did before. Using the same sum, 8 over 5, divide 5 over 4. All right, so I want you to apply the same step. So I'm going to put three minutes on the clock. I want you to work this out for me. All right, do your best. Three minutes on the clock. Okay, after this, we'll do some, we'll jump straight into the quiz questions, right? Yes. So you're using the same steps as you would for proper division, proper fraction. All right, and after this, we are going to review all of them. All right, proper and improper. How to add, multiply, subtract, and divide. All right, so let me explain what's going on. All right, we are going to go through all of them. Uh oh, where'd my pen go? All right, we're going to go through all of them again. All 
All right. Okay, so step one, we have to change the sign. So it's now going to be eight fifths multiply by five fourths. You change the sign. Then the second step, we have to flip the second fraction. Right, we have to flip the second fraction. So let me go back to the rules for multiplication. Let me see if I can go back. No, not for multiplication, sorry. For division. Right? So step one, you change the size into multiplication. You flip over the second fraction. This is step two, that's in blue. And then we use the multiplication rules. So let's go back to the multiplication rules. All right, let me move this some further down. Right, so we've done the second step. Now let's do the third step. We're gonna change it into, we're gonna flip the second fraction. So eight over five multiplied by four over five. Right, so there are two ways to do our multiplication. We multiply the numerators together, then multiply the denominators, then reduce. Or we can cancel by cross division, multiply numerators together, or multiply denominators together. Right? Which one you all want to do? Left or right? Anybody? Any chat? First person who message in chat, we'll do it that way. Left or right? Type it in, let me know. Left or right? Aha, uh -huh. okay, so the put all right, so we have a tie. Okay, so we'll do left and right. So the left says you multiply the denominator, the numerators. So let's do that. So eight multiplied by four is going to be what? Gentlemen, eight multiplied by four is going to be tables. This is tables. Thirty-two. 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 Yes, thirty-two. Ah, uh, let's look at the denominators now. Five multiplied by five will give us, let me hear. 25. 25. All right, let's pause there for now. Let's go over to the right side. Let's try it this way. So we're going to put eight over five. Right, we already do all the steps, so we're down here. We've changed the sign, we have flipped it over. So we're here now. Right, can anything be cross cancelled here? Anything? No, it cannot be reduced. All right, four cannot go into five. Without a remainder, five cannot go to eight without a remainder. So we cannot use the me this method, right? We cannot use this method. 
So that's why you need to know your tables, your multiples. So the easiest method would be the method on the left. That's why it's important to know two methods. So now let's do some long division here because we kind of leave this as a as an improper fraction, right? So because we don't have much space, we're gonna go over to the next side. All right, I want you all to do that for me. So all that for me. And then put your answer as a mixed number. Do that for me. Oh, I closed off the thing. Do that for me. How many times can 25 go into 32? What is going to be the remainder? All right, then we're going to do some, we're going to just review, right? We won't do the quiz today. We'll just review. Ah, I see someone. Does someone have an answer? The whole number, yes. Yes, now let's get the numerator and the denominator. All right, we know the denominator is definitely going to be 25, right? So we need to find what's going to be the whole and what's going to be the numerator. All right, I see one person has an answer. I put my answer in the chat. Put yours in the chat, all right. Okay, so we're just waiting for Tariq now. Yes, Tariq? Put, put, put your question in the chat. How many times can 25 go into 32? One time, excellent, right. It can go one time. So our next step would be, we have to subtract. 32 minus 25 will give us seven. Right? So one whole, seven remainder. One whole, seven remainder. All 
All right, so let's do a review from the beginning. Yes, you were very close. All right, let's do a review from the beginning. Oh, we have some bubbles. So we're going back, we're going back. So this is how we divide improper fractions, right? So make sure you all take down an example. All right, let's go back to the beginning. All right, so we need to be able to add, subtract, divide, multiply. Proper and make, well, proper and improper. All right, we, we ran out of time, so we will not be able to do the mixed. All right, so let's just do some, let's just go through the rules. So for addition, you could use of proper fractions or improper, right? You can use the equivalent fraction method or the butterfly method. We're gonna go through those again. Subtraction, same rules, same rule apply. Multiplication, we have two different methods. On the left side, step three steps, multiply numerators together, multiply denominators together, then reduce or simplify, cancel by cross division, multiply numerators together or multiply denominators together. Right, the method we can use this for proper and improper. Division, you change the sign into multiplication. You flip over the second fraction and then use the same multiplication rules. These apply for both improper and proper fractions. All right, so the rules apply, All right? Same rules. So let's do some together. Let's try some together, okay? I'm gonna put four to test the four, multiply, add, right? Three, um, your message is blank. All right, so we have add, so come here. Subtract will come here, a subtraction sum, right? A multiplication sum will come here, and a division, right? You're only doing those four for me. Only four sums you're gonna do, right? All right, so it's going to be a mix of proper and improper. All right, so we have one third plus four ninths on the subtraction. Three quarters minus a half.
All right, so these are our examples, right? Let me label them, numbers one, two, three, and four. All right, so time is on the clock. Nine minutes. All right, apply the rules. All right, time is up, gentlemen. Okay, so here's what we'll do. Since we didn't get time to put it in the chat, right? I'm going to put the answers on the screen, right? Uh, whichever one you did not get correct, right? Put that in the chat. So if, it, if you got number one incorrect, put number one. If you got number two, put number two. If you put three, if you got one, two, and four incorrect, put that. If you got all incorrect, put all. All right, so I'm going to put the answers for you. All right, so look at the screen. So the first one. Um, number one, the answer was seven ninths, seven ninths. Okay, in the chat, anybody got that wrong? Oh boy. All right. All right. All right, one more person, I'm waiting for your response. All right, so let's do the corrections. All right, they are both, they both have different denominators. So what we have to do, we have to change them into equivalent fractions, so they both have the same denominator. What denominator did you all choose, gentlemen? Somebody put it in the chat, so I'll know. What denominator did you all choose? Well, if, well, based on the answer, the denominator would be nine, right? The denominator should have been nine. So then we have to change one third into an equivalent fraction. All right, look at the screen, look at the screen. So from three to go to nine, you have to multiply by three. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. One multiplied by three will give you three. So one third has now become three ninths. So we can write it over three nines plus four nines. And that is how we get our final answer. Um, can somebody tell me where they went wrong? If you get turn on your mic and let me know where you went wrong. We'll type it. All of the steps? Okay, that's very strange. 
Did you find the equivalent fraction? Yes or no? Okay, all right. You're going wrong for all of the steps. I'm not sure, okay, if you're going wrong for all of these steps. What is the first step that you did? Well, I think, okay, so I think I did something else other than this. No, but what? I, remember, I can't see in your book. So what did you do? Tell me. I did like the butterfly method. You did the butterfly, no problem. We could do it using the butterfly. All but right. I think I messed it up when, when I did, when I used the butterfly method. I thought it was something else when I use it. All right. Um, Tariq, you did the equivalent fraction method. Where did you go wrong? Did you change one third into an equivalent fraction so that its denominator is nine? Let me know in the chat. All right, I'm gonna do the butterfly methods for those who did the butterfly method. All right, one by nine is nine. Four trees are 12. Nine by three is 27. You don't know. No, I'm asking you a question. Did you change one third into an equivalent fraction? Did you do that? Yes or no, tell me. No, well, that's, that's your first mistake. So then if they have two different denominators, well, how did you figure that out? And as the first step, you have to find a common denominator. You try the equivalent method or the butterfly method. What did you do? Elijah, did you get this correct? Okay, what if you did the equivalent method? And you, so if you did the equivalent method, what did you change one third into? What fraction? You didn't get it either. What method did you use, Elijah? The butterfly method. All right, did you get up to here? Nine plus 12 over 27. Those who did butterfly, did you get nine plus 12 over 27? Did you get that? Yes, miss. Makaya? No, cause I think I did something wrong. All right, 21 over 27. All right, all I need to do now is reduce. That's not just finishing this for me. All right, we can use three. The final answer, seven, 21 divided by three will give you seven. 27 divided by three will give you nine. So you will get the same thing. So for those who did the butterfly method, take down the correction. I'm coming back to the elimination method. So Tariq, you did not do, you did not change one third into three nines. What exactly did you do? What was your first step? All right, everybody else take down your. No, no, Tariq, you can't tell me you don't know. You would have written something, right? Did you write anything? Did you start this up? Yes or no? Did you start it? Okay. What? Okay. After you wrote the sum, a third plus a four. What was your next step? Okay. 
Can you write it on the screen? Oh boy, we're running out of time. Yikes. All right, we're running out of time. We're supposed to finish at two. All right, if you can't write it on your screen, um, what was your second line? What was your first line of working? I need to know what your first line of working was. What was your first step? What did you do next? After you wrote down the sum, what did you do next? What did you write next? You would have started to do your work in. What did you write down? Did you write anything? I hope you're not doing this off the top of your head, right? I hope you're writing on each step. Uh, what did, what was your first line of working? After you did after you wrote down the sum, one third plus a four over nine, what was your next step? What did you do after that? To start to work it out. What did you do? Add it. You added it. You see you got five over twelve. Did you, that's strange. But that's, we didn't do that for any of those. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? I'm, okay, I'm confused. But so you did not do the elimination method. Why, I don't know, why would you add it? We, we didn't add, we've never, Do you know, what method do you know in school? What, what method do they do in school? Because they would never have done adding across like that, only for multiplying. So what method do you know in school? Adding across is not a method. So what method did you do in school? You didn't do any. Huh. So here are the answers for the other questions, All right? These are the answers here. Did anybody else get any of the others? The multiplication, the division, or the subtraction? Anybody else got any of the others? Just let me know in the chat, yes or no. All right, I think I'll, um, time is the issue here, All right? We're gonna have to time in the speed at which we, um, we have to work on that. All right, so we've come to the end. So now that you know the answers, right? I want you to do it on your own. Try it again, do it on your own using the rules that we have. Take your time and keep working it until you get the answer. So basically you're working backwards, All right? You have the sum, you have the answer. So you have to fill in the working in between using, that, using the rules that we have, right? All right, so we're out of time. Unfortunately, we had a lot to do, but um, we are out of time. So what's going to happen? All right, I'm going to send this recording to you. All right, I'm going to send it to you. Well, your parents, right? I'm going to email it to them. And um, you can go over it again.
right? You have it. So go over it over and over again, right? And you re so practice, keep going over it. Go in your textbooks. Everybody has textbooks. Practice how many sums. It's the same rules over and over, right? So that is it for today. Good job, guys. Makai, you have a question? Your hand is raised. Or you just wait? Yes. Yes, um, what's the question? So when is this class going to be every Saturday? No, this was just a one-off class. Right? This was just a workshop for fractions. Oh, okay. Right? You all are starting regular lessons. Well, those who are doing lessons with me, you all are starting from Tuesday. Okay. All right. So practice, practice, practice. Especially the tables. Okay, guys. All right. So that's it. Bye. See y'all later.